So it's really great to have you all here. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, these little black lanyards are actually PGP volunteers. And so I often go to meetings, and I run into people who say they're a PGP volunteer, at just at regular meetings. And today I feel like I have X-ray vision. I can actually tell in advance who they are. This is my conflict of interest slide. Uh, and many of these companies have actually helped the PGP as well, or my lab, or me, or something like that. Um, and this is World DNA Day, April 25th, anniversary of Watson Crick, and anniversary of many, many announcements we finished the human genome, although we haven't. And the theme here is, the theme is here is uniqueness. And we'll get that. So get is genomes, environments, and traits. It is not genes and disease. Traits aren't necessarily about disease, and we need environments to understand this. The other theme today that I hope you take away from this is this is not just about an individual, or, or it's not just about we. It is about we, but not the we that's encouraged in the genomics world of getting buried in a list of authors or getting buried in a cohort that's gigantic for supposed statistical reasons. It's a different kind of we. It's we are unique. We are, each of us are individually unique, and this project is unique, and this conference is unique. I will be surprised if any of you have been at a conference like this one. In fact, even the previous GET conferences were like this, and I'll explain in a minute what that means. So how is the GET conference and the Personal Genome Project unique? I've done it in terms of vowels here, OK? We are not just interested in deleterious alleles, but advantageous alleles, too, the things that make us uh, have superpowers in a certain sense as a way of thinking about it. We educate first, rather than having an opaque consent form. We also provide an opaque consent form. But before you get to that, uh, you have to get 100% on an entrance exam. So that's the educate first part. And we're also very proud to have a lot of the world's top uh, educators here from the PG Ed, uh, personal, ed uh, genome ed personal Genetics Education Project here. Uh, it's really a, a rare opportunity. Um, this is the only open access. I, I, that sounds weird, and I, every time I say it, I can't believe it, um, but we really are the only open access source for human genomes, environments, and traits in the world. Uh, that's, and uh, I hope that changes. So it is changing, as, as you'll see. This is integrative. Uh, it's not just inherited genomes, but it's environmental components measured in uh, our immune response to microbiomes. We're going to hear a lot about that. And uh, epigenomics defined broadly RNA, proteins, uh, metabolites, and stem cells. We're going to hear some cutting edge work on organs on chips, which we're going to personalize. And finally, uncommon. We're not just interested in the common diseases and common alleles, but, but uh, uncommon as well. So those are the vowels. It's a little more complicated than that. This is about crowdsourcing. Many of you have heard of crowdsourcing. I think this is an admission of, of computer scientists that we haven't solved artificial intelligence. That's what it usually means. It, they're copying out, and they're assigning the humans the task that the computer should be doing. This is different. We actually need the crowd. The crowd is important because they know more about themselves than anybody could, any person or computer. So it, really, it matters. This is the only meeting that I know of where we have experts and the cohorts themselves, sometimes in the same person, educators, press, ethical, legal, and social experts all in the same place, talking to each other, often being the same person. The cohort has grown tremendously. I'm not going to give you exact numbers. It's very fuzzy, and that's a good thing. It's thousands. Uh, there are, uh, the sequencing is lagging behind, and that's a good thing, too, because the cost is coming down, and, and fundraising is still quite critical. We have a lot of new grants for technology development, not so many new grants for sequencing. We have at least 200 new people going into the cohort, uh, into the sequencing pipeline, uh, due to a very generous uh, recent donation of a million dollars. And we have uh, uh, at least 10 to 15 of those per month. There's, nothing, there's no other project that's like that that's producing, uh, se putting sequencing data combined with environments and traits into the public domain. The ideas that we represent here are going viral. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I just came from a West Coast meeting of the SAGE Consortium, 
And it is clear that the, uh, the idea of, uh, of uh, sharing back to volunteers is becoming almost obligatory. Sharing with the public is becoming clearly a bottleneck that has to be solved and is being solved. They even have a real names discovery project that's not as far along. Uh, we don't require names for the personal genome project, um, but we certainly set a standard that is being emulated uh, because that, in effect, you need to think of it that way. At this meeting, we actually show environmental and trait uh, data collection in practice, not just, in, not just on slides, but you will, if you wander around the site here, you will see people uh, having their bug removed. Uh, not all of it, some of it. Uh, the, 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 the conference organizers, which, which, to which we were very grateful, were worried about the rugs because they were afraid we were actually going to exsanguinate people onto the rugs. So you may notice that there's a, there's a screen there. But there are many other very interesting technologies to, to measure uh, morphological features and uh, so forth. And you'll see these in practice at the meeting. And this is really exciting. We have uh, hundreds of, uh, 131 volunteers here. Some of them will be, uh, will be uh, tested. We have awesome sequencing technology. It's not, this is not a sequencing technology meeting by any, but we have one, one little session on that. And nanopores, for those of you that aren't in the field, uh, is like a tsunami uh, in terms of excitement. It's not actually in the marketplace yet, but it's hard to get anybody to talk about them from the companies. But we managed to get uh, that represented here, as well as a real clinical device, not a research device that's been uh, retrofit. And then, as I said, education, and then we'll talk about plans for the future. Just some quick vignettes, and then we'll get on. Uh, this is PTP number two, John Halamka. Uh, he's a real volunteer, not just for our project, for many others. Here's him injecting or having a, a radio frequency ID injected in his arm. There's a brain slices from PGP number one. Um, fortunately, they are virtual brain slices rather than actual brain slices, or else this talk would be much less interesting to you. And part of the reason that, that we do, and it was very easy to get recruits from our cohort to do this, uh, with Randy Buckner's uh, project. And, we, and you'll hear more about this at the very end of the day from Ken Nakayama, who's interested in facial blindness. But part of the reason that we were doing brain slices on PHP number one is there was concern that he might uh, have Alzheimer's. And this is an interesting slide in that uh, Jim Watson is kind of like Lady Godiva. A lot of people know his APOE status because he didn't want to know it, but he made his genome public they redacted his APOE, but they didn't redact the nearby DNA. And so a lot of people know it. I'm not going to reveal it. Uh, uh, and then uh, we, were, so, and we were concerned why it is that uh, my memory is getting better with the years. And it turns out I'm an APOE3 homozygote. So maybe that explains it. Now, we do not have 11th graders in the, as volunteers. The cutoff is 21. But Ann West was uh, here featured in the Wall Street Journal. She was 11th grader, spent the summer in our lab, and has spent every summer since in our lab. And her father uh, is, uh, is a PGP volunteer, John West. And she, she analyzed her whole family's whole genome sequence for her 11th grade science project. So this sets a new bar for your kids' uh, projects. Uh, and, and he actually had factor V Leiden, uh, which, uh, which affects the way he thinks about long plane rides, among other things, and what he does. Uh, Kay All was in the Boston Globe. She was one of the students, and, and uh, she's participated in some of the software development that we use for predicting. And, uh, and she was a student in one of my undergraduate classes, and then she went off, uh, joined one of my companies, and in her spare time, she would sequence or analyze her DNA in her closet here. This is literally on the floor of her closet. Uh, her father had hemochromatosis, and so she wanted to know whether she had it. Clearly, the FDA cannot stop this sort of activity. John Lowerman, this is in Bloomberg very recently, he found out not just about his inherited genome, but we didn't intend to find out about his somatic genome, but we found out somatic mutations in his blood. Here's Jotha Curia, which is one of, one of the, the uh, MDs uh, in, the, uh, in the Personal Genome Project. Uh, taking blood from, uh, from John, and you'll hear more about that later on. Madeline Ball wears many hats, uh, 
and she's really a terrific example of a volunteer at many le levels. Uh, this is her blogging, and I urge you to look, if you haven't already, look at the Personal Genomes blog uh, about her, her son, who's not yet born, uh, and uh, she was concerned about X-linked mental retardation, and uh, I'm not going to steal her show. She, she comes up later today, uh, she, uh, but this, and you can look at this blog to see the, how an N equals 1 study can be very interesting uh, uh, and use relatively little data to get some very interesting results. So I'm just going to close on, this is not about going from your genome to your traits from, with a fancy computer program. We'd love to do that, we're, 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 but we're not, that's not our goal. Our goal is to fill in the environmental component. We can actually measure the environment in a variety of ways that you'll hear about. And part of the way, some of the ways are actually genomic. Uh, so we can measure your microbiome and how it uh, affects your immunome. And we can see how your epigenome responds to your, your metabolic environment and how your metabolome itself responds. And we can do imaging. We can do uh, imaging of, uh, of uh, like the one I showed, of, of a whole brain. Or we can do it at very high detail, subcellular molecules. Um, in place. The epigenome means basically everything beyond the genome, how it all plays out, and this can be methylation, proteomics, and so forth. So when we say traits, it's all of this and all the intermediates. We have now sp expanded. I've already mentioned that, that we've inspired things like SAGE and we're working with them, but we, ha we technically have our IRB protocol has been now adopted in a few countries, sometimes adapted uh, with uh, major changes. But uh, now Korea, Israel, Germany, and Canada, and uh, we're very excited about that we're sharing uh, the data under a CC0, which means we're uh, actually uh, no strings attached uh, for the data, and we're constantly debating exactly the best way to do the cells. That's a little less obvious. We're approved for 100,000 in the Boston PGP. That doesn't apply to the other uh, countries. They can do whatever they want. And we're increasingly doing wireless and connected uh, health monitoring, and so we actually have the MGH Connected Health uh, Group here. Um, I'm not going to go through all the technologies. The technology is growing, and it will come up in subsequent sessions. And then the last uh, session before Ken uh, Nakayama's uh, prosopagnosia, face blindness, is this organs on chip and what, what that holds for the future. So quick overview. The vision setting for today. I really hope you enjoy this unusual uh, conference. <laughs>